So what do we do? We have a group of patients. Everybody thought myasthenia was one umbrella. Well, it's a big umbrella. It's a big umbrella that has to have all these people underneath it. The ocular, the early onset, the late onset, those with and without thymoma, those with and without the LR, the LRP4 antibodies, those with just must antibodies, and then they coincide and they overlap, as you see on the right-hand side, with these other coexisting conditions. And what we try to do is to define the patient based upon what we see on the left and what we see on the right to try to determine what's the best therapy to pursue. So here's how you define it. The early onset group is usually less than 50. A late onset group usually greater than 50. Patients with thymoma can be any age, muscle specific kinase, any age, as far as the LRP4, seronegative, and ocular. So there are some things that we can define by how they start, when they start, and what they do that will help us decide what to do, and then we'll talk about the thymus gland because that's going to be important. But this is how we kind of define the disease, disease clinically with ages of 50, under 50 and over 50. So how does the eye work? First of all, the eye is a camera, sends an image to the brain. It's important to remember the eye does not see. The eye doesn't do any integration at all, just the camera. All the integration comes up in the brain. The movement of the eye is controlled by six muscles. One out, one in, two up, two down. Six muscles controlled by three nerves. One nerve goes to the muscle that pulls the eye out. One nerve goes to the muscle that pulls the eye down and in. One nerve goes to the other four muscles plus the eyelid. What you have to do then is you have to coordinate that movement. So that's a lot of muscle. That's a lot of movement. It has to be extremely precise. We then have this in each eye. So now you need to remember that in the brain, there has to be a computer controlling six nerves to 12 muscles to keep things straight all the time. And that's the trick of vision here. So at night when we sleep, our eyes roll up and out. When we wake up in the morning through a process called fusion, you develop single binocular vision. It's the job of the computer, keep your eyes straight all day long no matter where you're looking move six, six nerves to 12 muscles precisely within a millimeter of each other at an instant. And the computer knows what it's doing because the computer is working. What we're seeing in myasthenia is end muscle disease. This is where the muscle and the nerve are interacting in the orbit, not in the brainstem, producing the double vision. So throughout the day, eye moving control maintains fusion to see one object, and double vision or diplopia results when the two eyes aren't lined up. It can occur as a result of underaction of any of the muscles, and that's one of the problems with myasthenia. It produces this, I've had patients with horizontal, vertical, oblique, and torsional diplopia, and variable. Well, it's only bad when I blank. You know, doctor hurts when I do this, what should I do? The answer is don't do this. So it's one solution. Anyway, double vision also varies in positions of gaze. Double vision can also vary throughout the day because of fatigue, and the variability is characteristic of myasthenia, which makes this extremely difficult to treat with constant treatment. I mean, I can, you know, when I do measurements in the office, I have the patients looking at a target and I'm lining up prisms. And then too frequent, more than that, patients will say, well, this is good if all I did all day long was sit still and not move my head. I know, but I don't have a machine that measures that. And, and you don't sit all day long with your head not moving. Your, your head's moving, your eye's moving, and here goes your eyes wherever you want. Very difficult to fix. So first we want to determine the nature of the double vision, attempt to neutralize the double vision with prism in the glasses, attempt to determine a solution which works for the majority of the time. I tell patients that when we use, the, when we use prisms and glasses to, to try to adjust double vision or neutralize it, we apply the Abraham Lincoln rule. The Abraham Lincoln rule is you'll never make all the people happy all the time. So you know you're never going to have a solution that works all the time. I actually have patients with myasthenia that also have several pair of glasses, one for distance, one for reading. I have one patient who has a glasses for morning, glasses for evening. Why? Because the evening glasses have more prism in it. And the variable nature makes it very difficult to treat. So, separate pair of glasses, more prism as we need to. Now, what can we do about it medically? The ocular symptoms tend to respond better to prednisone than mestinone, even though mestinone is your first-line drug, because 80% of patients are still going to have systemic myasthenia and need mestinone. The ocular symptoms may improve following removal of the thymus gland if it's present, which is why we're now scanning everybody's chest and trying to get the thymus removed. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. The eye movements also with myasthenia can affect the eyelid. Now the drooping eyelid is very difficult to fix. It's called ptosis. And ptosis, we can sometimes use medications, but sometimes we have to use mechanical devices like a ptosis crutch or even surgery to lift up the lid. All right. So what are the drugs most commonly used? Well, there's a whole army of them. So first it's pteridostigmine, followed by prednisone, followed by azathioprine, followed by Celtip. 
And then we're getting into the other stranger drugs, the rituximab, the methotrexate, cyclosporin, tacrolimus, cyclophosphamide, and IVIG. This is in the armamentarium of the neurologist to decide what are we going to do in order to make this patient's life better. Uh, first, starting with mestadon is easy because the side effects are usually tolerable. The other problems with prednisone are diabetes, high blood pressure, ulcers of the stomach, and osteoporosis. So I have a young gentleman that I've treated for three years with ocular myasthenia, 10 milligrams of prednisone a day, no double vision whatsoever. At year, three years and one day, he woke up, stood up, put, fell down, dissolved his right hip. Why? Because that's what prednisone does. But he had no double vision. So we asked, do you want to stop the prednisone? He said, no. So he went and had his hip replaced. As he had his hip replaced, the doctor said, you know, the other one's going. He said, I'll call you when it goes. So we now into three years into that. But it's not uncommon to get side effects from prednisone that you have to live with. And if you can live with it, then you're doing good. And what do we do? How, what's the diagnostic diagram? So the diagnosis is confirmed. Then we try something simple like mestinon. If that doesn't work, then we add prednisone. If that doesn't work, then we start adding other medications or switching. And some of the switching stuff that we're doing is either adding cell steps for mild disease or even doing stuff like plasma exchange and ocular immunotherapy with IVIG, which works very well.